So imagine I'm doing a lesson for a group of fifth graders, and I'm either the theater teacher, the English teacher, maybe a little bit of both. And so I decided to do the lesson on solitude and loneliness. You can find lots of poems on those topics. So let's just dive right in. Okay. So these are the poems that I chose. And they're all pretty classic. A lot of them are fairly famous. But there's something I want to point out here. The concept of loneliness and the reverse of that, maybe solitude, these are great concepts. And sometimes they have a negative connotation and sometimes they have a positive connotation. But no matter which way we go with it, kids understand this concept. It's very approachable. They've been lonely. They've experienced both sides of it probably from a very young age. So this is a very approachable concept. And because, because it's a very approachable concept, we can, if we stay with the same theme, we're able to do some poems that are a little bit more complex. Not necessarily more adult, just they have a little bit more going on. Now, you might notice the symbols between the name of the poem. For example, the first one, I wandered lonely as a cloud. There's a series of plus signs before William Wordsworth. Okay, plus signs mean that it's showing the positive side of being having solitude or loneliness. And so then we look at the other side of it, which is like alone from Edgar Allan Poe, which is saying it's showing a negative side to this loneliness. And, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of balance these two sides. Poems like Things by Mueller, it really doesn't take a side, it just notices it and talks to us. And you could take either interpretation. Obviously, Little Boy Lost by William Blake. This is part of Songs of Experience. And um, we want to kind of hit it all. So the first thing I do, I just read all the poems to the kids. Maybe we would read them all together again, but once they're more comfortable with it, and then we'd move on to the activities. Okay, so the first thing is we would want to do a kind of a debate. I know debates are a little overdone, but hang on. We break the class into two. One has to take the side of loneliness. In other words, being alone in the negative light. And the other ones would take being alone in the positive light. But the catch is they can only use references from the poetry. They can't talk about their own life. Not for now. And they can't talk about um, other poetry. Just they're centered in the, these 10 poems. So they have to really start investigating them. And in doing so, they might understand the poems better. Maybe some of those that I marked as negative or neutral, the opposite side ends up using. Now, we then, if we have more time, and this is a good exercise for this class, we will flip it. The class will then switch sides, but now they will be allowed to use personal stories. And if we continue it to another day, they can even bring in outside poetry to try to continue to make their point. All right, let's move on. Now this is called, very simply, add a stanza. It's a very different exercise. The idea is fairly simple. Every student has to add one stanza to the poems. They can make it a prologue that goes before the action. They can find somewhere in the middle and kind of add a stanza there. And they could say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add an epilogue. And all of those are fine. And we they learn these terms. And they have to match the style, though, of the poetry, both the rhythm and meter and things like that. But also they have to match the meaning and the intent. Now, kids could work in groups, but if you work in a group of two, you have to do two poems. And all of them would obviously be shared at the end. So why these two activities? Um, adding a stanza helps them understand varying poetic styles and focuses on both matching rhythm, meter, chronology, and thematics. 
and the imagery. The debate keeps poetry in the center by having that be the only source and later allows them to pull in examples that can be from other poems and from their life. But that's why. I hope you enjoyed this little talk. Um, till next time.